um, uh, we we have, and, and just to say like where people can start, we have, we we'll actually have five of the six. We're still struggling with the Arabic, but that's another story. Um, but of course, the first place is figuring out which language version we're going to go with. Um, so some of the ideas, you know, I'm thinking about is annotation strategies. Like you have something, you, this project's going on. It's like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm involved with this kind of OER. Or I'm doing this, this open textbook, or I'm involved in this consortium effort. And I think there's going to be a place to hang my project here. And I think that's valid. And I think that might be one of the hooks is for people to say, like, put something in that, that they're focusing on, that they're doing research on. There's nothing wrong with that because it'd be great to have people plug in their academic, scholarly, um, community activities where they fit and support the recommendation. The other way I think about it is you kind of come in and you're going to, I'm going to scroll down and scroll down and scroll down. Um, a lot of the intros, um, you could look at what other people have already annotated and add examples. And that's certainly one thing, but you know, when we get down here into um, the recommendation and I'm going to, there's the capacity building and the areas of action. And, you know, we've had some annotation here. So I'm thinking about, um, uh, and I had this laid out before and yeah, the in, uh, inclusive and equitable OER thing. So um, I was looking at this uh, one part here that I'm highlighting um, this section B um, supporting OER stakeholders to develop gender sensitive, culturally and linguistically relevant OER and to create local language OER, particular in indigenous language, which are less used, under resourced, and endangered. Um, so I think what you don't want to do is what I have here. You don't want to like annotate that whole phrase because there's so much in here. So I think part of the understanding is like getting very specific. Would you say so, Ramy? What, what, what would you annotate out of this section? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot here. And I, I agree that even with my students in a kind of course context, and I'm always, you know, reminding them like, one of the beauties with this particular tool and the social annotation practices at the granularity of what we call the anchor text or whatever that you've highlighted can really be quite small. And so rather than, you know, selecting entire paragraphs, maybe there's just a word or two that really, again, brings some nuance to that particular phrase. So yes, I mean, you're right here, you know, this is a, quite, a, quite a phrase to unpack, right? I mean, there's just so much in here, but again, I think it speaks to the nature of the document. And so this becomes maybe, you know, if I'm gonna pull out a little bit of a literary analogy here, the difference between telling versus showing, right? The recommendation is telling us this. It's telling us to support OER stakeholders as they develop this, right? And so the question becomes like, well, who's done gender sensitive, you know, OER development? Who's done work that is culturally, you know, linguistically relevant, right? Who can share an example of an OER that's in a particular, you know, local language or an indigenous language? And this is where we might, again, proactively reach out to folks and invite in that example, or I could also see this, you know, kind of crossing into social media in some respects by saying like, hey, like, do you have an example of, you know, OER that's, uh, you know, culturally and linguistically relevant? If mm. so, like reply to this tweet. Now, without getting, you know, belaboring the technical side of this here, if someone who is an open educational, you know, advocate or practitioner shares an example, let's say on Twitter, well, that tweet could be linked to and your job, Alan, or somebody else in this case could actually be to curate that and to say, mm -hmm. you know, to highlight just the words culturally and linguistically relevant OER and say a great example was shared by so-and-so, here's their tweet. Right. And then this hypothesis annotation thing, which some people might not feel comfortable again, joining mm -hmm. could point to somebody's example, let's say on Twitter, where that again is a more, let's say, you know, everyday social media environment where people are like, oh, here's an example and here's an example. And then the evidence that is curated here points to examples that way. And so again, I see that there's one, the need to be pretty particular about identifying the examples, maybe working in other digital spaces to elicit those examples, mm. and then having someone serve as a bit of a curator or a facilitator saying, here's an example that points over here. Um, if someone's not again, willing to take the 30 seconds to create a free hypothesis account, you know, and add in their own annotation, which I get, I also get that too though, right? Yeah, I get that. yeah. That is, uh, I'm gonna run with that idea because um, 
Also, because you because um, every annotation has a unique URL, so you can draw people in to say, like, look, we really we're looking for specific things that that demonstrate um, gender sensitive, um, relevant OER, and um, because there's obviously so much out there, like just this one sentence um, yeah. could could be bombarded with like, that too many annotations problem. And so right. when I was, you know, when I was thinking about this, because I'm trying to do some little demo videos to, to talk about this process, I just did some searching and I ended up on this um, Afghanistan digital library that's uh, of, of OERs that's like in six different um, Arabic languages in, in Afghanistan. And then I'm wandering down this rabbit hole. They have a whole project where they make this um entire resource available as a standalone install for use in places where internet connectivity is low. And that's another that's down the page in terms of the recommendation, but like, you know, just in looking for the things um, in the discovery, I think that's where, and I think, um, I don't know whether Paul or my colleague Isla has talked, we're talking about making this into an OER itself. Well, I think that's important. So here's what, this is great, Alan. And this is why I love deepening the conversation because here we are about 40 some odd minutes into this conversation. And I'm actually, this is why it's so good to think together <laughs> and to make your, make your thinking visible. As I'm realizing that maybe the purpose of this annotated version needs to be very clearly um, framed for those people who you see as contributing even just to the annotations. And so again, I've been thinking about this to some degree as kind of like a conversation space. And I think I've said that in a variety of different ways, even in this discussion is like, well, here's a place where advocates and practitioners of open education could kind of show up. It's almost like, let's say a happy hour or like a brunch and people are getting together and they're gonna just kind of riff and talk about mm -hmm. open education in all of its various manifestations using the recommendation as that source text. Now, that's a little bit more free form. It actually might lack some of the examples that you're looking to elicit. And it may create, actually to Paul's point earlier, just actually a lot of noise that although maybe inspiring or maybe kind of very collegial might not actually provide some of the evidence, some of the examples that you really wish to highlight. And so a very different purpose of this annotated version of the recommendation may be to actually be a space that curates. And so the recommendation is less about discussing it or even discussing how wonderful open education is or how problematic it can be or how just challenging it is to really do it, whatever it is, but rather to say, if we need examples of OER that is in this case, gender sensitive, that's the phrasing here. I wanna help curate other people's examples of that and really use this actually as a hub that curates examples and evidence and maybe some of the complexities associated with this. And that's a very different purpose for annotating the document. And it's a very different reason why other readers would want to visit this and then access the layer of annotations. Other readers might want to access this not as then a future participant in the conversation, but they might want to access the annotated version because they're looking for more information. They're actually looking for a kind of central hub of some of this to really, again, show and not just tell. So maybe uh, I'm going to ask Paul maybe to speak to, because we are going, we're not, we're, we're, there's a reason we're doing all this. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a year long effort um, or more, um, but in terms of, um, you know, um, actually, you know, making sure that this recommendation becomes something that we, that's implemented, that we see in the world that actually has action. Um, and so, um, you know, parts of it do, but um, we're, we're trying to, to go towards um, something that, that can synthesize some meaning and direction out of this, but um, I'm trying to like put some words out there um, but maybe we do need to be more clear as to where we're going with this. Yeah, I really, and I really like that idea about it being that there could be a curatorial purpose behind the invitation to engage in the annotation activity. One observation I have is that, you know, there are five distinct action areas in this recommendation. And when, even if we looked at 
in response to our call for proposals, which our conference this year was focused on the UNESCO OER recommendation, you see lots of proposals coming in around capacity building, let's say, but hardly any coming in around sustainability. And so maybe curation can happen in the area of capacity building, but maybe we need discussion and uh, a kind of different motivation for the action area that pertains to sustainability because there may not be a lot to curate currently. And so, so it's sort of um, potentially a segmentation of the recommendation into different categories 